There's a lot of research at the moment that shows that students who come to school already knowing where numbers are used, how they're used, why we use them, and have some ideas about number, actually get off to a flying start. For instance, obviously they need to be able to count to 10 and beyond, um, but just being able to count isn't sufficient. Um, being able to, say for instance, collect four spoons ready for the dessert, being able to sort the socks and make sure that they've got six pairs of socks. They're all activities that parents can do with their children that tie number in to even everyday activities. Playing dice games, for instance, is vital. Dice and dominoes. The dots on the dice and the dominoes are set out in certain patterns that make it easy for the child to just look and say, well, I know there's three dots there, I know there's four dots there, that's called subitizing. Keith Devlin says that's the foundation of all later maths. A lot of children these days come to school and they've never played with a dice or a domino or a playing card, and yet these are things accessible in most homes. We need children to be able to compare quantities. I might have five red M&Ms and eight blue M&Ms, and I might say, are there more blue than red? How would we work that out? What makes you think that? So being able to use the language of comparison, more than, less than, even things like, well, you've got four there. If I gave you another one, how many would you have? Um, tying in visual, perceptual language along with the counting. There's lots of opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis where we can actually be involving children in basic maths. Sorting the coins, doing, doing some cooking, counting how many spoonfuls of something going to a recipe just generally involving kids in day-to-day -day activities involving measurement and number. Really, students should be able to come to school and identify if something is larger than something else, smaller than something else. They should be using the word words big, bigger, biggest, small, small, smallest. Um, they should have been involved in those kinds of comparisons. A lot of parents help their children learn to count. They even show them how to count on their fingers. And sometimes that's not necessarily a good thing. We don't want children to become too um, fixated on touching and counting all the time. Much more important to look at a group and say, I know there's four there. And then being able to count on four, five, six, seven. As soon as we show children how to count with their fingers, I've got three here and two here. You'll see them go, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. And that might look quite clever, but really it's not doing addition, it's actually counting three times to do something as simple as work out that three and two more is five. So more important that they know there's three there, they can see three, and then they just go three, four, five. No need for fingers at all. And one of the things that parents have probably stopped doing as much as they used to is using number rhymes. Now some of you will remember when you were little, endlessly singing things like one, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then I let it go again. Now, there's a lot embedded in that rhyme. First, we've counted to five. We've broken the counting sequence. We know we can pick that counting sequence up again, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and we've also set up a rhythm that's laying down later foundations for counting in fives. If you look at something like one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, um, knock the door, those are doing the same thing, counting in twos, breaking the counting sequence, laying down some really important um, concepts that are going to be built on in the first year or two of school. Being able to recognise some numbers is obviously important, um, but equally important is know where they're, knowing where they're found. Um, we get in the car, we go shopping, we do things with our ch children, we miss opportunities to look and see where the numbers are used. They're used on price tickets, they're used on birthday cards, they're used on the front of buses, they're used on car number plates, and they all work in a different way. A price ticket tells us how much something is, a label on a packet tells us how many things are in that packet, a number on a house tells us which ordinal number in the street that number refers to. These are things that we can be pointing out to children, talking about, even when we're rushing along doing shopping or in the car going somewhere. A lot of missed opportunities that lay down the number sense ideas children need to bring to school.